Hello folks and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and Let's Try Sorcerer King. It's developed by Stardock. It's available for Windows on Steam. It's in early access right now. You can get in for $39.99. It does support Steam achievements and cloud saves. I will be playing a press copy that was provided to me to cover for you guys. So first off, I'm gonna start a new game. Uh, we're not gonna go too far into a new game. I already have a game that I've got several hours in that we'll be hopping into later. So I can show you what it's like a little bit down the line. So first off, when you're starting a new game, you pick a like a, a class type that uh, has a name, has you know different abilities, different starting party. You have a specific ability for that person. For example, the wizard has the ability called hypnotism. The target enemy has a chance to switch sides. That's permanent, like as in that unit will actually join your party permanently, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, I've used that to good effect. Uh, that's the campaign that I played. Uh, just for grins, we're going to start with a guardian here. Looks like she starts with Earthly Familiar, can summon Earthly Guardians onto the map. A starting party looks like a Ranger, Croft, a Dwarf guy, and a spider named Bill. There's definitely a lot of uh, kind of uh, tongue-in-cheek humor in this game in, the, in various texts, which I find uh, pretty pretty amusing. Now, the spellbooks thing I don't quite understand. Uh, if you hover over them, it says Enchantment Spellbook increases the frequency that buffs and healing spells are available research. I understand that, but I don't get why there's three of them. Like, maybe however many books there are, indicates how much more likely that is. So with these four books, summoning spells are even more likely. Anyway, let's go ahead and say next. Uh, here you can kind of decide the parameters for your new world. Uh, what's kind of odd is like, for example, I have Oasis selected, but I can't change the size of Oasis. I don't know if that's something maybe coming down the map or coming down the line, because I know you can pick a different type of map and say, oh, I want a revive map and that's tiny, but you can't change the size, which is odd. You can also change, I guess, how quickly magic comes in. Uh, and also the difficulty we'll be doing normal. So we say next, and it'll create the world, which of course randomly generated. Now this is a 4X game, and we're gonna skip this here. 4X, and if you're not familiar, it's a lot like Civilization, Beyond Earth, those type of things where you build cities, you build armies, you gather resources, you learn new technology, and you try to conquer your enemies, whether it be through military might or some other means. Even though as far as I can tell, I think there's only really military in this game. So we're just going to go with the default name. So let's cover just the general interface and the basic outlines of things that will look familiar to you if you like the 4X type of uh, genre. So you start off with a city already built, in this case, Ethica. And you can kind of see the city borders here in red. You have our army here. When you, we select it, you can see the units of that army. You can split it up if you want. So if I wanted to pick Bill the Spider, and move him off on his own, I could, but for, for now we're gonna leave them leave them together. Uh, if we double click our city, you'll see again, a very familiar screen if you are familiar with the 4X genre of games. Uh, and I'm gonna try to explain this too, if you're not familiar with those types of games, I will try to kind of explain how that works. So we have food, production, essence, and thralls. Food is how much food that you produce. Production is basically Think of it as work units, doing anything like building a building or training units like archers or pikemen all use production as kind of a universal resource. The more production you have, the faster you create those things. Again, whether it's units or additions to the city like barracks, walls, uh, blacksmith, stuff like that. Essence indicates how many enchantments you can put on the city. In other words, how many buffs you can put on the city. Uh, that's spells that you can cast that increase things like productivity, increase the defense, things of that nature. Thralls I've actually not got into. I'm not sure if that's actually in the game yet, but I guess you can kind of bring other civilization under under your thumb, uh, whether in a positive or, or negative way, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and I guess that, that helps you in some way, but I haven't actually been able to, to do that yet, even after a few hours of playing. Uh, on the right-hand side here, we show what we can do. We can either build, some upgrades and we'll just choose the barracks just as an example here it says converts food into logistics and we'll talk about the different resource types in just a bit uh, but see it as you can show right below that it provides improved logistics plus three but it decreases our food supply by two so basically we sacrifice food for logistics which is useful for army building but again i'll go over the the resources that we have later on below that you'll see where it leads to Leads to armory, archery range, etc. Basically, those are buildings that unlock after we build the barracks. So we'll go ahead and put the barracks in the queue. And you'll notice here that it, and it doesn't get built instantly. It says seven turns. Now, again, if you have more production, that time is going to be less. If you have less production, it'll take longer. You can also see we have a summon cost here, 56. So if I wanted to cr create this immediately, 
And if I, I would use, I could use 56 mana to summon this pretty much instantly uh, by the next turn. We don't have that much mana yet. As you can see up here, again, we'll kind of cover all this a little bit later. Uh, but that's, we're building a barracks. Again, here's where you also, you can train pioneers, scouts, soldiers, things of that nature. Uh, lastly, I want to cover is this here is the map. Uh, this shows you the squares like around your city. And it shows you the types of resources. They're very small icons. Uh, so it's very difficult to see even for me, not even on YouTube. But the, like the first icon is food. The second one is production. The second one is the essence. And basically, if you got three food and nothing else, that means if you build out to that area, you'll start gathering three additional food. Uh, and you can choose which new areas to work every time your city gains a level and your city gains level from growing in size and population and you increase in population by food. So that's how that all ties together. You'll also see that we have a shard here. Now, briefly to kind of cover the story of the game, is the idea is that you've already lost. There's the, the Sorcerer King has already pretty much, you know, beaten everyone down, uh, and it's almost like a surefire doomsday scenario. Uh, he's trying to destroy these shards, because if he destroys the shards, then he wins, it's game over. So you want to collect these, one, to keep him from blowing them up, and two, because they're useful. So for in this case, you'll see, uh, when I select the shard, it says build a shrine here to gain mana, lore, and sovereign XP. Resources must be used within a territory before being built. Uh, so you'll see here, if I build this, I lose one logistics and we gain four magic. So we're going to go ahead and build it. It's instant. So we automatically get access to it. And you can see here the shards popped up uh, and we'll, we'll go into a bit more here, a little bit more. I want to cover the UI a little bit extra. Then we're going to go into the combat, gathering resources, all that interesting stuff. Quickly here, we have logistics, logistics, basically building units cost logistics. There are other buildings that cost logistics as well. For example, capturing this shard costs us a logistic. Uh, if you run out of logistics, you can't make more troops, uh, but certain buildings give you extra logistics, things like that. Mana is for spell casting. You can see when I hover over, it shows me my mana per turn. We get, again, you get bonus mana from certain buildings, also from our magic management, which I'll cover here shortly. Crystals, just another resource. You use that to build certain units like paladins, I believe. And we'll go over how to collect resources in just a bit. Metal, you use that for more of your armor troops, like uh, knights and things like that. Uh, mounts, you, again, this is on the resource that you have to capture. You'll see horses on the map, like in a static tile. Uh, you want to build a city or a barracks, not a barracks, but a uh, outpost next to it and claim the horses. And then you have access to horses. Now, the way this works is kind of interesting. And if I understand right, so let's say we have two metal and we build and we want to build a knight and a knight takes one metal. Well, if we build two knights, they permanently, as far as I can tell, permanently tie up that metal. If one of them dies, I think then that then frees that metal up to build a new knight. I'm not really crazy about that method of resources. I know different 4X games treat resources like that differently, the ones that are required to build certain units. And I've seen this type before where it like ties up that resource while that unit's alive, but then if they die, you get access to you know that one extra so you can build another knight or a different type of unit who uses metal. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that's how that works. I haven't tested it thoroughly. Uh, I'm not crazy with it. It's just weird. Like, why would a knight that I've already built continue to use metal? But, you know, it is what it is. It's not been a big problem uh, so far. But, you know, the, there it is. So, manage magic. Magic. This is an interesting, uh, interesting facet of this game. So, we're getting seven magic per turn. I don't know how exactly this is determined. Your shards, the shards that you have that we just captured, that increases your magic per turn. Uh, I don't know what else affects that. Again, maybe buildings do, things like that. I'm not sure. So here you decide how you want your magic per turn to be allocated. So you can have it go to skill. Skill is basically the XP you as a sovereign get every turn. Uh, so and you can, as a sovereign, uh, again, the class that we picked at the beginning does level up and you gain, you know, different talent trees, which we'll go over later. Mana, this directly goes into your mana pool. Pretty self-explanatory. And lore lore is basically research points basically you can research new spells and to research a spell you have to get x amount of lore so let's say to learn a fireball spell you have to have 10 lore so at the current rate it would take me about you know five ish level or five ish turns to get a new spell but if i wanted to really get that spell quickly i can move this over here and now it's only going to take me like two turns to do it and of course you can move this around you can see the numbers at the bottom change around here uh, and we're going to get into kind of the action here a little bit. It seems like we've been talking a lot about the, the various mechanics right now. So uh, first thing, let's pick our army. Let's go do some things. 
Uh, let's see here. Let's go to the Lost Library. Now, first off, there's a chest here. We're going to go to that chest. We find an item recipe. Inside the chest, you find several useful documents on crafting. Enchanted chain shirt recipe, potion of might recipe, nectar, and a papyrus scroll. That's cool. And we're going to go check out this Lost Library to show, uh, you know, again, I want to kind of show the various aspects of the game. There's a lot to cover, and I apologize, I apologize if I'm kind of blowing through a lot of it quickly, but we have a lot to cover. So I hit the uh, choose spell. Basically, this is your turn. This is a turn-based game. So you do all your things. You hit turn, then the enemies do their turn, etc. Uh, and this button will change based on what needs to happen. So if you have units that are idle that needs to be moved, you'll see that. So that you won't miss a turn. Like you won't just have a city not producing things because you forgot about it. It'll show up down here, which I really like. Some games don't do that for some weird, weird reason. So here's the spells that you have to choose to learn. Now, this is where the spell books earlier on come into play. So based on... The, I guess the type of character you have, these are somewhat random, but if like, let's say we're very focused on restoration type magic, we have a higher chance of seeing heal type spells pop up in the rotation. So, uh, and we can, you know, it gives a description of each. It tells us, you know, how much mana that spell costs to cast. It also tells us how long to research that spell at our current uh, allocation of lore. And we're just going to choose heal, heal just, you know, to get it out of the way. So now we're done with everything that we, we need to do. This character's movement, uh, have been used up this turn. So we're going to hit turn. All right, so nothing really exciting happened. So we're going to start moving back over here. And speaking of units, very quickly, you can see uh, we get, we have a name for the army. It's Paragon, the Ranger's Armor Army. Usually, if there's a hero in the party, it'll name it as that hero. You can see the overall battle strength. This gives you a rough idea of how tough a fight's going to be. Because when you hover over an enemy, it'll show you that their battle strength, which I'll show you that a little bit later in my loaded game. You can see how many moves that you have, and you're limited by your slowest troop. So if you want like a scouting party, you'll probably want to have everybody in it be very quick. Because uh, you don't want like people with 10 move and then one guy with 2 move, because that's going to slow everybody down. Uh, this shows the hit points of this one hero. Uh, equip shows you what items you can equip, and we'll go over the item system a little bit later. Explore puts them in an automated explore mode, so basically they will just go to every corner of the map. Because as you can see, once we get out here, we can't see anything. There's a fog of war going on. Uh, so the explorer will try to, you know, map out the, well, map so that you know what's what. Uh, guard means you just sits here and blocks this tile off. Uh, pass means you don't do anything. Uh, you've got movement turns, but you don't want to move for, for whatever reason. Uh, so we're done here. We're going to hit enter to end our turn. And let's go check out this lost library. It says it's weak. A lost library of the Magi, a good place to ask for information on magical lore or spells. Just be sure to use your indoor voice. So let's click on that. The basics of shelves. Another of the oddly plentiful lost libraries of the Magi appears before you and you eagerly climb the steps, interested in several scrolls. Inside you find a scene of frozen chaos, a distressed looking librarian sitting amongst a pile of unsorted scrolls. He explains that he is a terrible, terrible librarian and that he never wanted to be one, but his parents made him. I wanted to be a bard, he explains, but they were worried about the lifestyle of all the mead and all the mead. So now he's a librarian in a way over his head. Everything is miscategorized and mislabeled and also just thrown in one big heap. So you'll run into a lot of events like this where you've got the decisions that you can make. Uh, sometimes it'll resort in fights. And usually if you choose like the more obvious uh, direct intervention type things, you'll get rewarded for it. Otherwise, like if your army is really weak, you might want to just skip it entirely. Let's see, we grab any old scroll and leave, sort through everything for him and teach him how to file. Now, obviously, probably the best thing would be to teach him how to file in the long run. However, this is going to cost time. But let's let's go ahead and do that. Teach him how to file. You sit down with him and teach the basics of alphabet alphabet alphabet. Wow, I can't say that word right now. And how shells work. It's slow going, and you have to do a lot for him. But he eventually gets the hang of it. And the process, you learn a lot about libraries and a little bit about love. Wow. Uh, so we lost Doomsday Counter, which we'll we'll talk about that right after this. Actually, we gained 50 lore, which again we use that to research spells, and we gain one fame. I'm not quite sure what fame is for just yet. And that lore helped us to learn heal. Nice. So we had to pick our new spell. Uh, we'll just pick Stone Skin. I was picking them at random now. Wow, we actually got so much lore, we'll actually automatically learn Stone Skin. And I was just picking one that's really far off, just because, like I say, we're going to just kind of try to blow through this. So um, let's see. Oh, the Doomsday Counter. Let's talk about the Doomsday Counter. As I mentioned, this is kind of a everybody's screwed type scenario. The Doomsday Counter is slowly counting down. And when the Doomsday Counter ends, game over. It doesn't matter if you're doing really, really well. You've lost. The Sorcerer King's 
progress basically it's his progress toward casting the spell of dominion so if he casts this dominion spell everybody dies uh, or loses or whatnot you included so given that i think you can stop it by completely defeating him i don't think it's a complete you know well no matter what you do you lose i think you can defeat him uh, but i think you take out all his uh, armies and whatnot i haven't quite got that far i'm about five hours in and i haven't got that far but i was you know messing around a lot but that's one thing you you definitely want to keep in mind so gathering resources actually you know what i think that's enough for this kind of intro map so what i want to do now and just here's a quick look at the 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 end the options here some pretty standard options a lot of different music or audio volume options which might sound weird but uh that's something i really like yes we're just gonna abandon that we're gonna load vertigo tea party is the best and we'll take a look at the city that this is this is actually not as far as I'm in. I actually saved it here on purpose and then kept playing for several hours to, to get a bit further. Uh, so also too, you can see as we scroll out, it actually switches to a cloth map, which I really like with icons that show different things such as resources, your cities, your various troops, etc. which I really like that aesthetic. But so see here we have two towns. We have T-Town, T-Ten, and then we have Splitsville. Now, one thing I don't like, one of my negatives about this game is most of the time with 4x games you can build pretty much wherever you want right you can build your city wherever you want this game is very 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 specific and where you can build what i'm trying to do right now is find somewhere else i can actually build and i don't see any you can only build a city where there's food there has to be at least one food on that square uh, and it will show you on the square but if you're looking you don't you'll notice that there aren't really any squares that are showing food uh, and the reason is because there aren't really any squares around uh, that you can build a city on. Because at first I was looking for the option to show it. And I kept trying to build cities like all over the place and just could not do it. And finally I found this place way over here that finally had food. So I don't really like that aspect. I don't like the aspect of being that limited on where you can build your cities at. Not a big fan. Uh, so the question is, again, especially if you've played other 4X games, is well, how do you gather resources then, right? Because typically what you do... When you want to resources, for example, we have a crystal mine here. To build this, to get the mines, I built this city. Uh, not on rock and roll, but mostly just terra firma. Terra firma. And once you expand your city, or well, as soon as, as long as this is within range of your city uh, borders, which again you can see with the little red marks there, you can claim it. So I just click on it, and then you say build mine, and you start harvesting it. Uh, it does cost, you know, uh, tactics points or what are they called? Uh, logistics points uh, but we get plus three crystal access which we need for advanced units like paladins so to gather other resources because a lot of resources are not near places where you can build a city you instead have to build these outposts outposts increase your zone of control and attack nearby enemies i think it's just a range attack so if any enemies gets within range it just starts shooting arrows at them but the big big thing is that it allows you to grab these things so we have a claw a clay quarry here uh, metal quarry here and of course the shard shrine and we want to get as many shards as possible for multiple reasons uh, a lot of magic ties in the shards so spells for example that you cast or abilities that your heroes can do uh, the effectiveness will increase based on however many shards you have access to also this does somehow tie into the overarching idea of the the sorcerer king taking over and you can see my my doomsday counters a bit further now i am on easy so it's been been you know kind of blowing through it pretty pretty quickly here so all that out of the way let's show the combat um let's we're gonna pick an army you see we have a lot of army units here uh you can also level your hero up hero up as well i'll show you that stuff in a little bit um, i'm trying to find an, an enemy enemy okay i kind of remember this so let's see idle cities we're just gonna build something random finish our turn one thing I would really like to see, if on the off chance the developers are actually watching, and I know this is obviously early access, blah, 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 but as you, you know, expand your city out onto squares, I would like to see there be some kind of visual indicator here on the map that those squares are being worked. Like if you could actually see people farming and chopping down trees and whatnot, that would be really, really awesome. Just, just throwing that out there. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick our army. Let's go over here to the mysterious cave, even though it looks like a village city leveled up so this is a good example to show you like now i can pick where i want to like what square i want to work 
and there's no well no i guess that doesn't make sense never mind forget it. i was gonna say that. so i want this i want to get as much production as possible so i'm gonna grab this foresty type area be done we also have an idle city over here again just build something random oh that was one of my traveler guys i guess i don't know so let's go oh a shard's nearly destroyed so again Way up here, it looks like he's attacking, the Sorcerer King's attacking a shard, and I don't really have time to get over there to stop him. So we're just going to keep exploring around here. Let's see. So, not going to read all this, but basically large cows gathered around this guy. They're trying to kill him, so we're going to charge then and rescue him. And I think, yeah, okay, good. This is going to show us a battle. Now again, keep in mind, first of all, this is uneasy. Secondly, this army I have is pretty nasty, and these guys are not all that nasty. So, um, you have your your order of units here. I'm actually kind of it, it's kind of hard to tell how this works because this is the this is the unit that we're starting with. This is the guy who has the highest initiative, which is our hero uh, Tandis. But he's like right here, fourth down. So I don't get why he wouldn't be here. Like whoever your current person is, I don't quite see why they're not at the top or at the bottom. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Anyway, so you can see the squares that we can move. They're all in yellow here. Uh, of course, we want to get as close as possible. So we're going to run him over here. And you can run through allied units, which is really nice. Uh, now, we don't, we, we're out of melee range. We can't move again, which is a bit unfortunate because uh, I kind of would like to say, well, I substitute my attack for a second move, but you can't. So it is what it is. Now, you have different abilities here. He can smite to do extra damage. He does a sweep, which does damage to all enemies in the eight tile radius, which is actually really nasty. Uh, and abilities abilities do work on cooldowns, not mana. Inspire, all friendly units on the battlefield get 15 to dodge effect last five turns. You also have parchments and potions and stuff that you can find and make, which we will cover in a little bit. But for now, we're gonna actually do inspire. I wanna give everybody a plus dodge which is pretty darn nice. It lasts for five turns, and most combat doesn't even last that long. At least, well, on easy, it doesn't. Uh, I, I like buffs that do that. I hate when you play games like this and you get cool buffs. It's like, last one round. It kind of makes me not want to ever bother with that buff. Uh, but see, now we have a paladin, and paladins, of course, as you know, ride dragons. So he's going to run over here. Now, you do have to watch out for these obstacles, because those do get in the way. And uh, now this guy is close enough, so we're just going to right-click to attack. He does 15 damage. This guy is going to walk around here. Now, you'll notice this when I attack. Both of them attack. So I don't know if they're both actually attacking because it only said 10 damage, which was actually less than he did before. So I don't quite understand how that works. Uh, but at any rate, so we're going to move these guys up. And they're definitely too far away. And they don't have any special abilities. So they're just going to pass. Sentinel is going to move up. It's very interesting to play this game after uh, just coming off of Banner Saga with how incredibly frustrated I got with that game. Uh, you can actually attack stuff at diagonal, uh, which is, you know, super nice. Uh, you can also walk through your own troops, things like that. So, you know, you might argue that it's dumbed down or, or simplified combat, which I'm okay with, giving it's a 4x game. Uh, also, if you want to just auto-resolve combat when you start, you have that option. If you don't want to have to do these battles, you can do auto-resolve. So the Warlock has spells, so he obviously doesn't need to get in range. So we're going to do an Arcane Arrow. And as far as I can tell, any kind of ranged attack, or most types of ranged attacks like arrows, seem to be the entire screen. So you're going to have archers way back here shooting people way in the back, uh, which is really, really nice. We're going to move our pikemen up. And again, different classes have different things, like Impale, which makes him, like, if you line up enemies, like there's two enemies here, you can hit this guy for full damage, and this one for 75%, something like that. So that's pretty cool that they each have their different abilities. We're going to move him up. Going to pass. And so you get basically how... Let's go ahead and move these guys up since they can't attack. We'll attack. Does, did good damage. So, and again, we have different spellcasters that have different uh, abilities. We have buffs and debuffs and all that. So, also if you look up here, we have an option to call Sovereign. So this is where your spell... Well, this is one of the areas that your spells come into play. You can use them in combat. So in this case... And depending on your 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 talents and, and whatnot, it de determines how often you can cast spells. Now, casting a spell will also use this unit's turn. So uh, I've got Maya select or Maya is the current player right now. So if I use the Call Sovereign and cast a spell, this uses up her turn. So that's an interesting uh, part of that mechanic, in my opinion. Uh, so 
and just to kind of end this fight and to show you, you know, just kind of get it over with here, we are going to pick, actually, oh, I didn't hit that spell yet. Yeah, Flame Wave. It brings forth a wave of flame that causes 16 plus one per shard fire damage to all enemy units. This spell is really nice. And it tends to wipe everything out that I run into or severely damage them. Now, a lot of times, and it kind of sucks, not this time, but a lot of times you'll get loot from fights uh, and it's dependent on what you fight. So if you fight wolves, you'll get wolf fur, which you can use for crafting. If you fight bandits, you tend to get things like a jaw, you know, uh, glass potions and things like that. So let's see, done. All right, so we rescued a, a, a rescued young man in fame. One thing I don't quite get about the rescued young man, he can't really fight, but it kind of it gives you the impression that you can use him in your towns, but I haven't found a way to do that. So as you can see, our army is actually full. So we have a little army, like a thing here. We can have to choose army two because they can't all fit together. We're going to send this guy back. He'll never make it uh, just because, not because he'll die, but just because it'll take him too long to get over there. So, you know, that's that's the combat. I like the combat. Uh, it's Again, it's a 4X game. I don't expect it to be overly complex and in-depth. Uh, I think it's it's interesting and tactical enough for me. Uh, I haven't had a problem with it. Again, I'm on easy just because I kind of wanted to, to try the game and learn the mechanics out, you know, just without having to fight a, diff a hard, you know, high difficulty curve too. But it definitely has been very, very easy up to this point. And we've, we've pretty much stomped on everything we've run into. Uh, and again, you can hover over your own army and you see the little 56 next to the cross sword that tell you like how much uh, how much damage you have. You chose your overall health, things like that. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't see any enemy units on the screen or else I'd hover over them and it will tell you their overall difficulty. So the next thing I want to talk about is the craft. And we kind of hit on this a few times. Now this, uh, I have a lot of recipes here because I found them either through combat or because I built city improvements that increase the things that I can make. So here we can use a lot of the resources that we find, things like, you know, clouded emeralds and oil and flawless iron to build, to create things. We can make armor, we can make weapons, we can make scrolls, potions, and other things like rings. Uh, see, pretty much rings is pretty much, oh yeah, um, we can build some shields. Things like that that have various stats, you know, bonuses, things, things of that nature. Uh, growth potions, gain 50% to attack, but lose uh, 20 dodge. Things like that. Now, I haven't actually been getting much or enough resources to really make much armor. Uh, it seems to be pretty hard to get things, especially like the eye, because you would think, oh, we have the iron mine, we can make iron armor, right? Not really the case, or chain armor. You have to find this flawless iron, which, as far as I can tell, only can be found either by defeating enemies or by doing the quests that you find on the map. You can't actually, again, as far as I can tell, you can't actually harvest that stuff which I find to be a bit disappointing. I can kind of understand it because, you know, once you have access to the iron, then you could just pump out, you know, chain, you know, all this really nice armor and then just, you know, roll over your opposition. I would rather have found another way to balance that out though, because being able to only very rarely make armor is kind of a, kind of a bummer. And it just doesn't make much sense. I've got iron mines, but yet I can't make like chain boots. Yeah, that's, that kind of sucks. I, I would like to see that done in, in my opinion, I like to see that done in a different way. And you can find different armor as well that has special attributes like this. The wearer's body seems to disappear into this midnight black cloak, uh, increases your dodge plus 10, which is uh, something I like. But uh, yeah, I really like this aspect of the game though. I like, I really like, if you've, if you've, if you're familiar with Stardock, you know, with like galactic civilization where you can customize your ships and stuff. I really don't get in with that because I just, I don't have the patience to learn how to customize. However, I do like being able to build or, you know, find and create chain boots and weapons and outfitting the individual units just to make them tougher. Now, here's another thing before we, we leave off on the crafting and optimization is when an enemy, when you die, when a unit dies, you lose that armor. So like if I put this armor, the chain shirt on a pikeman and that unit died, the pike, that armor is gone forever. I guess you could argue that it's, it's destroyed. Uh, but just just think it's pretty much once it's on them, it's gone. Uh, you can unequip it. That's fine. But you can't if they die, it's gone. So if we're looking right now and you can again, you can equip anybody in your armor with anything, even your mages, you can put chain armor and whatnot on them. Uh, so you can see my hero. I've got him pretty, pretty decked out uh, pretty good here. Uh, you know, chain shirt, chain boots, you know, basically giving him the best that I can because uh, your hero, when they die, I don't think they die permanently. They go back to your city. I haven't had a hero die yet. 
uh, but I, I think they come back to your city. I could be wrong on that, um, but uh, and this is basically his overall combat rating, hit points. This shows all of his various abilities. Uh, this shows the equipment that he's got access to, the consumables. This is all our trade skill stuff that we found. Now here's a skill tree. Now heroes, now your regular heroes or your regular units like pikemen and archers, they all level up as well, but they don't really have talent trees. They just get more hit points and do more damage, I think. Your heroes, on the other hand, have actual skill trees, and the skill trees are based on the type of w hero they are. So this guy's a warrior, so he has more like, he does have some, uh, he has basically offense and defensive type uh, talents. Uh, I try to build him more defense. So, you know, I kind of gave him more dodge. Uh, you know, I gave him that one inspire buff to give everybody else dodge, things like that. Uh, so you want to level them up. You definitely want to keep them alive. Get as much experience points as possible so you can, uh, you know, get their, their skill trees up. They get them leveled and make them even nastier for us to deal with. Uh, so that's the atomization and the warrior, the, uh, the heroes. Heroes, the way you get those is just by basically doing quests. A lot of times when you do a quest, a person will be like, hey, I'll join you. And they'll either join as like a regular unit, like a pikeman, or there'll be an actual hero. That's how I basically get in all of the, the heroes that I have with me. And again, you can have multiple armies. Like if I wanted to split this up, I could just, you know, select out multiples and then send them off on their own. Maybe they could go back. Because for example, there's these layers here, like this tarantula army here and it shows like a 14 strength. I could just break off some of my units and go take these guys out. They're not a real threat though. So it's not really a big deal to leave them there. You can't build your cities and your barracks or your um, your outposts too close to them. So if there's like a resource right here, you definitely want to take it out. Honestly, I just didn't even see that until later on. So if I wanted to send a small detachment out there to take them out, just to, to clear them out, you you can do that. But uh, uh, let's see, that might be just about everything. This game does support mods as well. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. It feels like there's there was so much more. Oh, kind of quickly to finish up here, we're going to go over the various UI elements because... Again, if you're in the forest games, you know that a lot of these types of games, uh, it's important to have as much of this information available to you as possible as far as what your cities are doing, how well they're doing on resources, things of that nature. So under the world report, we show we have four of the 10 shards controlled. Uh, some of them are probably destroyed, I think, or about to be destroyed. Uh, Doomsday counter, we're about one fifth of the way through the Doomsday counter, which I'm assuming is probably going slower too because I'm on easy difficulty. Uh, Remnant Faction Allegiance. This is the other factions. I can't figure out how to attack them. Like, I try to attack one other city, and it wouldn't quite let me. So I don't really know how that works. Shows our cities. Uh, we can hover over it. Shows their production. Shows how close they are to leveling up. Uh, we also can see the enemy strongholds. Now, these, I have been able to take one of those out. And I presume that if you take out all the enemy strongholds, then, you know, you win the game. Uh, Sovereign Log. Uh, this tells you basically your, your rough stats. Uh, now that I've gotten a pretty nasty army, uh, this th uh, Sorcerer King has puts me at a 5 out of 5. Uh, he considers me to be very dangerous, so now he's kind of focusing on me, which, as far as I can tell, what that means is he start he's starting to send units out to me. Initially, I wasn't really bothered by anything. Nothing was really attacking me, but I've noticed later on that I do see the occasional units heading towards my cities trying to attack them. But again, on easy, they can defend themselves very, very easy. Uh, we can also see the Sorcerer King stats right now. Not very good. Uh, again, we're on easy though. So you can also see your active quests. You do get quests in this game where, you know, oh, go do this thing or, oh, I, I lost this staff in this cave. Can you go get it for me? And you can go do it. And if you get it, you know, you can get the staff. Sometimes you have a choice. Like you can have that person join you as like an archer or you can, you know, you take an item, you know, whatever. So that's that's pretty neat. I like the the idea of all those, those uh, like options you have when when somebody joins up. Uh, cities, again, this just gives you a very quick overview of your cities, what they're producing, what they're creating, uh, what enhancements are on those cities right now. Spells, just your spell book, like all the spells that you know and crafting, we kind of went over that. So yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, at least all of the beginning information that you need to know for Sorcerer Kings. I've really been enjoying this so far. Uh, I like for the 4X genre, I'm not necessarily that great at them, but I do enjoy them. Uh, it's it's an interesting spin on it as far as the whole doomsday counter i don't know how much that's going to play into it initially i was very re hesitant because when i play a game like civilization i want to play it for the long haul like even after i've beat the other civilization whether it be culture or whatever i still just keep playing just to keep expanding keep you know getting more tech things of that nature so i tend to just keep wanting to play so the idea that if i don't 
beat it by X amount of time, it's game over. I, not crazy about that. Uh, I could definitely see how some people, folks would you know be okay with that. Just be, you know, it's okay with their play style. Uh, maybe not so much for me, but I haven't really given it a fair shot yet. I haven't really been affected by it. So I can't say one way or the other, yes, I would hate this, or oh, this actually didn't turn out to be so bad. Um, so, you know, that's that was my initial take on the Doomsday Doomsday counter. Uh, and, you know, I like I like that there's things to do, like running your skies around. Uh, I like any of these systems where you can level your troops up. I love the idea of leveling your troops up so that, you know, that you've got the idea that you get veteran troops, not that, you know, after the 20th battle, they're just as strong as they were at the first battle. I like the idea that they're actually getting tougher as you continue to go on. I also like that you can equip them out. So especially if you've got a higher level group, you want to keep them alive. So you throw all the really good armor on them to keep them alive, to get so which makes them stronger, which makes them live longer to level up more, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, I really, really like that idea. Uh, and I like being able to go around, do random quests, find random layers and destroy those for XP and loot. Uh, you know, the crafting system is is pretty cool. And all again, all all of this, keep in mind, is still still in early access. I don't know if they plan on multiplayer. Honestly, I'm not that big on multiplayer these types of games, but I know there's definitely a strong part of the communities that that are into it. Uh, right now, it does not have multiplayer, as far as I'm aware. I don't know what the plans are as far as multiplayer, but uh, I guess you can always check out their early access page on Steam. I'll have links to every all the relevant information in the uh, description below the video. So anyway, I think I've rambled on along enough about Sorcerer King by Stardock. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been informative for you. Make sure to leave comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know what you think of this game. Follow me on Twitter and I will see you next time. Step back though. We are getting this I, I worked up you, about a mobile game. I mean, I do hate you though. <laughs> I want to be 100% clear with a moment of seriousness. I hate your guts.